Write the differential equation for a quantity whose rate of decay is proportional to its amount. That is, the more material present means faster it decays. Okay, what this question A is referring to is that the rate of change of P, let's just call the material as P, and the rate of change is the uh, derivative of the quantity with respect to time, is uh, proportional to the quantity itself. That's what it means. Uh, but if you read again, it says rate of decay, not rate of change. And rate of decay just means that it's decreasing. Uh, so the bigger P is, the faster it's decreasing. So uh, that means you should write this minus sign to make sure that this is decreasing. Only when you have the derivative negative, it, it means it's decreasing, right? So this is what the translation of the sentence in A uh, becomes if you write it in, in math notation. But whenever you have a proportionality statement, you can rewrite this as an equation by using a proportionality constant. We're going to call that K. Okay. Or, uh, or just dp over dt equals to negative kp, where k is proportionality, proportionality constant. Okay, so we're just going to call it that. And uh, part b says solve the differential equation by separating the variables. What does that mean? Well. You can first multiply dt both sides, and you get negative kp times dt. And then you divide both sides by p, so that pp cancels. And what you get is dp over p equals to negative k dt. Now, k is just a constant. It's not a variable. t and p are variables. And we like to see t as the independent variable and p as the dependent variable. But anyways, they're, they're variables. And uh, uh, that means we've successfully made t only appear on the right side and p only appear on the left side. So we've separated the variables. And once you separated the variables, the nice thing is you can just integrate both sides and that solves the differential equation. That's how you solve a separable differential equation. This is a common example of a separable differential equation. Now note that if you integrate 1 over p, that gives you log of p, right? So you get ln of absolute value of p equals to, uh, if you integrate negative k, because negative k is just a constant, it's that constant times t, and then plus some constant c. Okay, uh, we still want to solve this for p because uh, p, after all, should be the dependent variable and t the independent. I want p to be a function of t. So we exponentiate this to get rid of ln, and we get p absolute value equals to e to the negative kt. And another thing I want to do is that if you have addition of exponents, that's, that's same as uh, multiplication of two exponentiated expressions so it's like this and therefore p would be like plus or minus e to the c e to the neg negative kt and it's customary to ju just call this as c okay uh, use uh, because uh, we already have reserved name for c let's just say this is t c tilde okay so c tilde c tilde and then uh, we're just going to call this as c so that uh, p is equal to some constant times e to the negative kt. That's the general solution for the above differential equation. Okay, uh, where is this differential equation used for? Well, it, it's used a lot in natural sciences, uh, in chemistry, or when you try to measure the age of some, some sample. Uh, so let's try this question C, but let's first uh, copy this uh, formula again. So we have the solution uh, p equals to c times e to the negative kt and uh, it says half-life of tritium is 12.3 years. 
how much of 0 0.024 grams of sample of tritium is present after 5.0 years and after 250 years. Okay, so how do we solve this? Now, uh, see that this formula actually has two unknowns, C and K. Uh, therefore, we first have to figure out what C and K are. And uh, from this, we see that initial value P of 0, the, the amount of tritium in the sample uh, at time t equal to 0, is 0 0.024 grams. Okay? And that means if I plug in 0 into t, I get 0 0.024 should equal to c times e to the negative k times 0, giving us that 0 0.024 is actually the value of c, because e to the 0th power is 1, right? Okay, good. So we figured out what 0 0.024, uh, what, we figured out what c is. Uh, we still need to figure out what k is. Uh, and to figure out what K is, then we have to use this information, which says half-life of tritium, uh, it's hydrogen-3, uh, is 12.3 years. So that means the amount after 12.3 years would be half of the initial, which is half of 0 0.024, which is 0 0.012, right? And again, we can use this formula. Uh, what's P of 12.3? According to this formula, it has to be uh, C is 0 0.024, E to the negative K times, this is the value of T, right? So I'm going to replace T by 12.3. That has to equal to 0 0.012. Dividing both sides by 0 0.024, we get e to the negative k, 12.3, equals to 1 over 2, or 0 0.5. And then to get rid of e, you, ln cancels e, right? e and ln are inverse functions, so we can do this. And then finally, dividing by 12.3, we get that k has to be ln of 0 0.5 divided by negative 12.3. Okay, I will need a calculator at this point, so I'm going to use an online calculator called uh, Desmos. So, uh, let's see, we need the uh, ln of 0 0.5 divided by negative 12.3. And this is the value. Okay, let's copy that place it here. Okay. So that's that's the value that we just figured out. Okay, let me make it bigger so it's easier for you to see. Okay. So that's the value, but it's not over yet. All we did was we were able to figure out what k is. Now, with the va values that we've found, we have to figure out what the amount of tritium is after five years and 250 years. So uh, let's copy this again. Uh, let's see. Uh, should be. Should be this number. So what is our p? P is uh, p is 0 0.024 e to the negative of this value times t, and we're really looking for p of five, and also p of 250. Okay, I presume these are going to be really small, so I'm actually afraid that uh, at p of 250, it, the calculator might not be able to calculate what we want. But anyways, uh, so we first multiply 5 to this and exponentiate it, and we have to multiply by 0 0.024. Let's use the calculator again. So we copy this. 
Okay, and we start again. We need uh, 0 0.024 times exponential function of negative of this value times 5. Okay, that's not too bad. This is the amount that we get. Let's make it bigger. Okay. So that's the first answer. And now go back and change this to 250. And, oh, okay. So it did give us some value. That's nice. And uh, here is what we get. And it's 10 to the negative eighth power, so uh, I'll rewrite that. But this is, uh, if I make it bigger, okay. So this, this is uh, to negative eighth power. And what's important for these uh, word problems is that you have to make sure that you don't forget the units. So these are values of the amount of material, and the amount of the material is used uh, measured in grams. So it should be grams and grams. Okay. Uh, now, for those who are uh, scientifically aware, probably uh, see that uh, there should be some uh, significant figures. So uh, because our initial value had two significant digits, that means uh, things over here really doesn't matter. So you can really just say 0 0.018 grams because it's an approximation and uh, things in here really doesn't, uh, it is not to be trusted after 1 8 because that's that's just two sig figures and same thing over here uh, 1.8 is all you can can trust and this is somewhat not so trustable so it should be 1.8 times 10 to the negative 8 grams so uh, there will be another way to write down the answer